Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm participating in the YouTube collaboration Stretch the Sketch. That's where we take a 12 by 12 sketch and alter it. We either shrink it or we stretch it. And in March, we're going to be working with this sketch, which is designed by our very own MK Gunn. She's one of our participants. My plan is to take MK Sketch and stretch it into a double page seven photo layout. That's what you see on the screen. And I'm going to talk you through my thought process of doing this, bumps and all, because I do have a bit of trouble. Anyway, I will put links to all the other participants in the description box below, so be sure to check out what they're up to this month. And here's what I'm going to be using. I have material from Doodlebug Designs Made with Love Collection. Now, in advance, I prepared a frame style foundation across two pages with six pieces of cardstock. And I gutted four of them. And take note, the white in the middle meets. Also, I have a bunch of paper here, obviously the cardstock that I gutted from behind the foundation page. The printed paper I cut into strips because I will be doing some die cutting with that later on. And everything else here is from that made with love collection except those aqua foam thickers those are from simple stories so here's mk sketch and my plan is to take that grid which is on a mat put it on the left hand page but kind of toss it towards the middle of this layout and then stretch that mat onto the right hand page which is where i'll be placing those three vertical photos now, the first thing I'm going to do is start preparing my foundation page. So I'm going to cut the mat, and I'm using that gray cardstock that I got it from behind the foundation page. And I am putting measurements for everything I'm doing on the screen. Now, I'm going to show you how, more or less, I plan to place my photos, and eventually I will adhere them later on. Also, you can see the sketch there. It's in the top left-hand corner. In the middle of that grid, there are some strips of paper. So I'm going to cut down four strips of paper, two for the left-hand page and two for the right-hand page, and they will be at different lengths. I will put this on the screen as well. However, if I were to do this again and wanted those strips in the middle, I'd probably make that block on the left-hand side a little bit wider, a little bit longer, because you're going to see a lot of it just gets covered up. Anyway, what I am going to do is trim them down here, and then I eventually ink them, and then I stop the film, and you're going to see I adhere them all. When I'm creating this page, I'm kind of winging it here, and I do end up covering up a lot of the pieces that I actually cut out. Anyway, that's part of the game when you're just trying to create and you don't have a big plan in advance. Anyway, so now I'm inking these strips of paper and you can see off camera I adhered the mat to the two pages. I also adhered those strips of paper along the middle of that mat and I adhered those four photos on the left. I kept the photos on the right separate for the time being because at this point I plan to place a journaling box there a title, and a fairly significant embellishment cluster. So I do want to play around with placement. Now once I have the foundation pieces in place and the photo placement decided upon, for me it's important to decide upon my journaling spot as well as my title. So I have that cut apart sheet there, those strips that I'm showing you right now that I'm placing behind the photo. That's part of this Made with Love collection. And you can see I have my title, Instant Pot Weekend, in two different alphas on wax paper. So I'm playing around with placement. And you can see I also cut that journaling box, thinking that I want it to kind of run right behind those photos in a very long strip. That ends up getting switched up a little bit later on. Now, you can also see on the sketch there are a bunch of hexagons. So that's what I'm cutting out right now. Those dies are from Close to My Heart. It's part of their hexagon nesting stitched dies. Really, really beautiful, actually. And the one I'm using is about three inches. So what I did was I continued cutting, and I cut out 
15 of those hexagons in three different pattern papers. And now what I'm going to do is start playing around with placement. Now at this point, I don't really follow the sketch for the placement of the hexagons. Essentially, I put them in three or four different areas, kind of snaking around the page. So that's what you see me doing right now. I'm playing with placement of these hexagons. I'm also playing with placement of the three pattern papers. And I am starting to actually get kind of uncomfortable. I find this collection totally beautiful, but these colors are really out of my comfort zone. They don't actually match my photos per se. There's a lot of colors in my photos. Anyway, so I'm having a bit of a hard time. You can also see with the placement of my hexagons on the left hand page, they will be kind of going underneath that gray mat, but on the right page, they are going to overlap, kind of go on top of that gray mat. So at this point, I start adhering. And basically what I do is I find one spot to start with. And I started with that hexagon, the white and gray one, at the top left corner on the left page of that gray block. And then I just built out from there. And you can also see, I want them to just go to the edge of that white foundation page. So what I'm doing is taking a pencil, making a mark, and then cutting it there, and then adhering it. I don't make you watch all of it, but you get an idea how I did that on the left hand page. And then I continued on the right. Now what I'm going to do is just fill in a few spots, especially that one there on the top left. When I did it and placed everything, there were some areas where there was trapped white space. So I filled that in there on the top left. And later on, I do that again on the right hand page. At this point, I decided I didn't want that journaling box. I wanted something more plain. I think the colors are a little overwhelming for me. So I found myself some lined paper. This is from Paige Evans' Go the Scenic Route. There's a lined paper in that collection, and I use it a lot. So I use the Creative Memories Border Maker system to, use, uh, to create a notebook border along one side of it. And then I trim that down at about nine and a half inches. Again, measurements are on the screen. And I'm just tucking it behind that photo mat on the left, and I like it a lot better than the colored one on the right hand page. So I'm playing around now with the embellishments. You can see I have a bunch of ephemera and stickers and all of that around me. And I started with a big piece and that kitchen cabinet there is almost the size of the photo. So I tucked it behind that photo on the right. I'm playing around with placement of the title. And finally, I decide to kind of put it to Kind of hug around the corner of that photo on the right and I do like that with the word weekend underneath but I do find that there's a lot of open space on that gray cardstock around those photos so I'm thinking of filling in some of that with some more hexagons so that's what you see me doing right now and I'm sort of happy with that, but you're going to see I do come in and change it a little bit later on. Not quite, though. I decide to adhere it at this point. Again, finding a place to start. And in this case, with that aqua colored one, I made sure the point just touched the top. And then I built out from around there. Now I'm going to adhere my photos. And then at this point, I'm not actually liking my hexagons there. So like I said, they're kind of giving me a little bit of trouble. But I plug forward with my embellishments, and I'm adhering them all down. And I am going to start adhering the title around that photo on the right. And then I'll stop the film, and then I'll continue doing that. And you'll see it's all done. Yes, so I'm not happy with my hexagons at this point, but I decide to go work in the top left hand corner. When the camera stopped, what I did was I put the date, March 2021, on wax paper in those same alphas that I used on the right page. And so essentially what I'm doing here is repeating 
the title that's in the bottom right hand corner. I'm just putting a bit of a repetition in the top left. And that is something I often do when I stretch a sketch. It kind of is a way for the eye to be guided across the two pages, I find. So now what I'm doing is adhering a piece of ephemera underneath the year 2021, and then I'll start adhering that down, and then I'll continue off camera a bit so you'll see the entire date the same kind of way I did it on the right hand page. I'm just kind of going around the photo there. And I am actually happy with that. The only thing I'm not happy with, and I mentioned it probably two or three times, are those hexagons there. So I decide to replace that aqua colored hexagon with a milder color with the white and gray, which makes it necessary for me to replace the other one because I didn't want two colors bumping up to identical colors side by side. I also want to point out, you can see there's a little bit of trap space between that photo that's kind of on the left hand side of the right page and that later on does get filled in with a little piece of a hexagon in the floral paper. I also don't like that floral hexagon at the bottom. You're going to see that disappears later on as well. I came in at one point and I added that spoon underneath the word weekend and it's one of those doodle bug pop-ups, really, really cute. And I wanted to make a visual triangle with those dimensional stickers. So you see the spoon there under weekend, there's a spatula just above the word instant and I, on the left hand page I put like a whisk. So you can see the page here and there are a few adjustments. I wasn't quite happy with it. So essentially what I did was I changed all the photo mats. You can see they are in aqua now as opposed to white, except the photo on the far right, it's double matted like a focal point photo. Also, I did some faux stitching around that gray photo mat. And I think in doing so, I brought more attention to the part of my layout, which is my photos essentially, and the journaling. So I'm happier with that. And also what I did aside from my journaling, of course, was I added some of those little epoxy hearts in three different areas on the page, but that's it. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to Scrapbooking Quebec, I would be absolutely thrilled if you did. Don't forget to check out all the other participants. Their links are in the description box below. And again, thank you so, so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.